All right, so here is how we do our bonus problem that I gave you in class today. Uh, and it kind of uses a basic formula that you, hopefully you've learned earlier in your mathematical careers. Uh, but we're going to use it in this way, and it goes with solving equations. So when we solve equations, we have something we don't know, which is the variable usually, right? And we have to try to get the variable by itself. doesn't change, even in a word problem. So in the 2004 Olympics, Sean Crawford won the 200-meter dash. His winning time was 19.79 seconds. Find his average speed to the nearest tenth of a meter per second. All right, so the formula that we need for this problem is an old one called distance equals rate times time, meaning that distance, so how far the journey is or whatever we're measuring, equals the rate, meaning usually the speed of something, times time, meaning how long does it take. Now, if you're wondering, well, how in the world do they get that? Well, here are some other variations, if you will, of distance equals rate times time. So if I wanted to solve for r, I could divide by t on both sides. So the rate equals distance over time which is how we get miles distance per hour, which is time. So when we drive the car 60 miles per hour on the freeway, it's 60 miles per hour, so meaning miles divided by hours, which is how we get the rate. So that means uh, the rate equals distance divided by time. That's how we get our speed of something. All right, so I could also do... Um, I could also rearrange this problem and divide by r if I wanted to to figure out time equals distance divided by rate, meaning how much time will it take for me to go somewhere. I can figure that out if I'm going on a car trip, and I like doing that with my wife when we go on car trips. But anyway, so to this time, we need to find out what do we know. We need to find out what do we know about this problem. So I'm going to erase all my work here that I did. All right, so what do we know about this problem? Well, the first thing I know is the distance. So when I do the distance, does it tell me in my problem? Well, he won the 200 meter dash. So 200 meters is my distance. All right, let's find out rate. Now, do we know what his rate is? Uh, I can't tell if it's the seconds or what it is, so I'm gonna leave that blank. Now let's look at time. Do I know how much time it took him? Well, yes, now I know. It tells me in the problem it took him 19.79 seconds. So the one thing I don't know about this problem is the rate. I don't know what my rate is. So what I'm going to do is plug in my numbers into the equation. So 200 meters equals the rate, which we don't know, times time, which is 19.79. And remember, you can write the dot or you can do the parentheses. So the goal is we need to get r by itself. In order to find out what the rate is, I need to get it by itself, just what we've been doing. So how do I get r by itself? Well, I have that 19.79 in the way, so, and r is being multiplied by 19.79. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. So I'm going to divide both sides by 19.79. And now you'll notice how I wrote m by 200 in seconds next to time. It's very important, especially in real life problems, you wanna make sure that you keep the units so I know exactly what my units are at the end. So I divided, of course, by 19.79 seconds, Notice how the seconds cancel and 19.79 cancels. So that's important. So now all we have left on that right side is R. And now I have 200 meters divided by 19.79 seconds. Notice how it's meters over seconds. Now, that's usually what they use in high speeds or in Europe. They use the metric system. Here in America, we do feet and miles and things like that. But meters per second is a rate, meaning that's how fast stuff can go. But I need to make sure it is over 1, meaning I need to actually do the work and divide 200 by 19.79. So what I'm actually going to do is move to another slide and do it. So 200 divided by 19.79. When I divide with decimals, here's what we need to do. We need to move the decimal on the outside two places because I want to work with whole numbers. So I moved it over two, and then notice what happens to the number on the inside. I have to do the same thing. So instead of 19.79, I have 1,979. And then instead of having 200, I'm going to have 20,000. And you're like, wow, that's making it really big. But it makes our process actually a lot simpler to find out what the answer is. So here's what I do. Can 19, 
1979 go into two? No. Can it go into 20? No. Can it go into 200? No. Can it go into 2000? Yes, one time. So that means I do one times 1979, and I subtract those numbers, and I'll go ahead and do it quickly here, and we'll come up with an answer of 21. So after we do that, we check down a zero. Can 1979 go into 210? No. So we put a zero on top this time, and I need to create more zeros. So I'm going to add the decimal and then check down some more zeros. Now, can 1979 go into 2,100? Uh, yes, one time. And then doing the math quickly, it's going to come up to 120. Now, uh, I don't need to worry about the remainder because in my question, notice what it says. Find his average speed to the nearest tenth of a meter. So we're in the tenths column with that 0.1. So my answer is 10.1. So the rate of which he was running is 10.1. And remember, back on the other slide, we did 10.1, and it was meters over seconds. So 10.1 meters per second is my answer.